Here's one of my favorite coding NTP problems that I've seen so far, and I'm going to call it the tower hopper problem here. And here's the problem. You're given an array of integers, and each integer in this array represents the height of the tower in that position. So with this given array, we have six towers with the heights 4, 2, 0, 0, 2, and 0. And the numbers you see at the top are just the indexes for the towers. And here's the objective of this problem. You start at index 0. Just imagine you're standing on this tower at index 0 of height 4. And you're going to jump from this tower to another tower to another tower. And eventually, we want to see if there's any way to get to the end of the array, or to be precise, to outside of this array. And the amount of steps that you can jump over depends on the height of the tower that you're standing on. So for example, if you're standing on the first tower at index 0, because the height is 4, you're able to jump over 4 steps at most. So at most, you can choose to jump over to index 4, or you can choose to jump over to anything less than that. So either index 1, 2, or 3. Whatever next step that you choose, you're going to repeat the same process. So for example, if you choose to go to index 1 after index 0, you have a choice between jumping over to index 3 or index 2 because the height of this tower is 2, so the maximum number of steps that you can jump is 2. And in this particular example, you can jump from index 0, the starting point, to index 4 by jumping over 4 steps, which is the maximum steps that's allowed from this tower, and then jump from there to outside of this array by jumping over 2 steps. And note here that if you jump just 1 step and get to index 5, then that wouldn't clear the requirement because our goal is to get outside of this array and not just to the end of the array. Now to formalize this problem a little bit, what we want to do is we want to be able to write a function called isHopable, which takes the given array and returns true if it's possible to start at index 0 and hop from one tower to another and eventually get outside of this array. As we saw earlier, isHopable of these towers should return true, but is hopable of 1, 0 should return false, because with this particular set of towers, the only choice here is to start at index 0, and then hop to index 1, and from there, we won't be able to hop anywhere because the height of that tower is 0. Now, as usual, if you want to practice, pause the video right here and see if you can solve the problem, and come back to the video when you're done or stuck. There are a few potential solutions for this problem, and one of them is using a graph. We can look at each tower as a node in our graph, and each path, each potential path from one tower to another as an edge between these nodes. And using these, we can construct a graph that represents the towers and the paths between them, and the objective in this solution will be to find a path from the first node or the first tower of height 4 at index 0 to the outside of this array. And the outside of this array can be represented as one of the nodes. Once we have that, we just need to use breadth first search or depth first search to find at least one path to see if we can get from the first node to outside of this array. Another potential solution to this problem is a dynamic programming or a recursive approach. If you look at the original problem of writing is hopable, it's a hard problem. It seems like a hard problem. So the idea behind a dynamic programming or recursive approach is to break it down into smaller problems and then solve those instead. So we'll try to write a function called helper, which takes two arguments, towers, which is the same as the original towers, and an index value, or an integer value, which represents the starting index. And helper of towers and the starting index should return true if it's possible to start at the given index, in this case, 
in X4 and hop from this tower to maybe another tower to another tower and eventually get outside of this array. In this particular case, this should return true because it's obvious that we can hop two steps from index 4 and get outside of this array. And the idea of this approach is to write is hoppable by recursively calling the helper function. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but for example, if we already know that the return value for helper of towers and 4 should be true, it's going to be easy for us, easier at least, for us to find the return value for helper of towers and 0. This is asking ourselves, is it possible for us to start at index 0 and then hop to another tower, maybe another tower, and eventually get outside of this array? So this is equivalent to is hoppable of towers. And right away, we'll know that it's possible for us to go from index 0 to index 4 just by hopping because the maximum number of steps that we can hop from this tower is 4. And since we already know that it's possible for us to go from index 4 to outside of this array from helper of towers 4, we'll know that helper of towers and 0 should be also true. Now, both of these approaches work the graph approach and the dynamic programming or recursive approach. But my favorite solution to this problem is neither of these. I'm not sure what I should call this, so I'm just going to call it the simple approach here. Here's how it works. We're going to try to write a function called next step, which takes two arguments. The first argument being the current position that you're standing on. And the second argument is the same towers as the original given towers. And this should return the next optimal step given the current position. So for example, the next step of 0 and towers, this particular towers, should return 4 because the optimal next step is index 4. And that next optimal step will be the next current position. And we can just feed it back to the next step function to find the next optimal step after that. So in this particular example, we're going to feed 4 back into the next step function to find the next optimal step after that. And next step of 4 and towers, or the optimal step for index 4 for this particular towers, should return 6 because after index 4, we'll be able to just jump 2 steps ahead to get outside of this array and we're done. And whatever is outside of this array can be denoted in this case with index 6, or in general with the length of the array as the index. So how should we write this function next step? The idea of this function is going to be, we look at the starting index, in this particular case 0, and we'll ask ourselves, what's the next step after that that'll allow us to go the farthest in the next step after that step? So for example, from index 0, we could jump one step ahead to choose index 1. And in that case, we'll be able to go up until index 3 by jumping two steps ahead from index 1. If we choose index 2, we're stuck on index 2 because the height of this tower is 0. And if you choose index 3, it's the same. We're stuck on index 3. And if we choose index 4, we'll be able to go two steps ahead by jumping two steps from there and we'll be able to get to index 6 at most. So in this particular case, we'll choose index 4 as the next optimal step because that's the next step after 0 that'll allow us to go the farthest in two steps. So why is that one the optimal next step after index 0? Here's one way to think about it. If you choose index 4 as the next step, the range of indices that we are covering ranges from 0 through 6. And if you choose, for example, 1 in this instead, index 1 instead as the next step, the range of indices that we can cover ranges only from 0 through 3 instead. So the range that we can cover with index 1 as the next step is merely a subset of the range that we can cover with index 4 as the next step. Now, it's possible in certain situations that whether we choose index 1 or index 4, 
will be able to get to the end of the array anyway. But if it is the case that it's possible for us to choose index 1 and get to the end of the array, it must also be true for us to be able to choose index 4 and then hop to another tower, another tower, and eventually get to the end of the array. And this is why the next optimal step after the current position is the position from which we can go the farthest in a single jump. Just to clarify this point a little bit more, let's examine another example. As you can see, we have towers of the heights 1, 3, 5, 3, 1, and so on. And we are trying to determine what the next optimal step should be, let's say, from index 1. So we're going to call our function next step of 1 and towers. And as we saw earlier, to find the next optimal step after that, we need to find the next step from which we can go the farthest in a single jump. And since we have a tower of height 3, we have three potential choices. If we choose index 2 as the next optimal step, or as the next step, we'll be able to jump 5 steps ahead of it since the height of this tower is 5, so we'll be able to get to index 7 after that. If we choose index 3 as the next step, we'll be able to get to index 6. And if we choose index 4, we will only be able to get to index 5 after this. And if you examine the ranges that we can cover with index 3 or index 4 as the next step are merely subsets of the range that we can cover by choosing index 2 as the next step. So the next optimal step after index 1 is 2. Once we have the next step function written, writing out the rest of the algorithm for the is hoppable function that we wanted to write originally should be easy. In this function, we'll first set a local variable called current to 0. And we're going to use this variable to keep track of where we are standing on currently. And we always start at index 0. After that, we'll feed the current number to the next step function to find the next optimal step. In this particular case, the next optimal step is the index 4, and we'll update current to that number. So current will be 4, and we'll just keep repeating this process until we get to either outside of this array, in that case we should return true from this function as we do in this example, or we fall into one of these cells where the tower's height is 0. In that case, we won't be able to hop anywhere else from there, so we'll need to return false from this function. Let's see what this solution might look like in code. We're going to write a function is hoppable, which takes towers and returns true, of course, if it's possible to start at index 0 and then hop over this towers, these towers and get to the end of the array, or to be precise, to outside of this array. The first thing we're going to do in this function is we're going to set as I said, a local variable called current to 0, and we're going to use this variable to keep track of the current position, and then we're going to run a while loop, and in this while loop, we'll update the current position to the next optimal step, given the current position, and if the current position happens to be larger than the length of towers, or equal to the length of the towers, then that means that the current position is already outside of this array, so we'll return true. And then if that's not the case, and if the current tower has the height 0, for example this one, that'll mean that we'll forever be stuck there because we won't be able to hop anywhere else from there, so we'll return false in this condition. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.